All right, uh, good morning. I would like to uh, continue with the um, 131M310A Limits Control Fan Module. And specifically what we're gonna do is continue on with um, we, where we ended up with was talking about limits, controls, uh, fan controls, um, the function, um, essentially standard helical bimetal elements, and some of its application considerations. So there are, um, and as mentioned uh, earlier, uh, one of the areas that we'll oftentimes or most likely deal with is with, um, with, these, with these types of systems. A lot of these are, are going to be on probably somewhat of an older unit um, that, you know, maybe, you know, anywhere from 15 to 25 years old. But not everybody is going to be all you know, giddy about putting a brand new unit in. And so there are going to be those applications where you're going to have to figure out a way to work on some of the older equipment. Uh, and that's fairly typical. Now, in um, as I mentioned that, I think it's imperative that we are at least have some concept or understanding of, of how these circuits are wired. And so in this, this section, I want to start talking a little bit about the wiring of that and how we will deal with these for single and dual voltage type systems. So the first area that I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw this one out here. And um, so on the first uh, first area, and I'm gonna draw that as a, as a 115 volt system. So I'll just say a 115 volt supply system. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come out of that 115 volt supply system and I'm gonna divvy this up into two different ones. So the first thing I'm going to I'm going to draw it as the fan control um, first one we're going to deal with is the fan control. So the fan control I'm going to draw it in this way. So I'm going to draw it this way and I'll draw my helical biometal okay. Now, this one here I'm going to identify this one as the as a fan control. So I'll list that as FC for fan control. Now, that particular system would most likely, on a rise in temp, would heat up and it would eventually close that up and allow the fan motor to run. So this one here, I'll identify that as my FM or fan motor. And then, of course, this will be my, my common or my neutral, I should say. Um, probably more likely we'll deal with that. So we'll just say it's a, a neutral. All right. Now... In a single voltage system, you have the exact same voltage going to the fan as you do to the limit. So I'm gonna draw this limit as the next area, and I'm gonna draw this as normally closed. And now, this control will then go, so I wanna, wanna zoom in on that a little bit. You might notice that I actually showed this, I, I'm going to circle that. Notice how this, and I'll, I'll make that a little bit thicker so you see it, but I'm drawing this to where it is above the trigger point or the contact point, and this is important to see that. That point would mean that on a rise in temp, it would open that circuit. So this is essentially the one on top was it would close on a rise in temp, and it would open on a fall in temp, this one is a limit, and it's going to open on a um, open on a rise, and and you can kind of tell that. Now, where does the limit go? So right now there's 115 volts going to that limit. So if you see them done this way, that also means that that is going to go to a transformer. And of course, that would end up coming out 24 volts, most likely, and then it would go to, let's just say it'll end up going to R as an example. And on this side, this is going to be my common side as well. So that's typically how a standard 115 system would, would be um, drawn or shown. Now, I want to, I actually want to go, go to this next page and I want to point this out to you. Now, internally, in these modules, there or in these units, 
there are either there's either going to be a re, there's going to be either a brass jumper what I'm showing here is it says a removable brass jumper now there are, there were different designs that were used over the years some the brand new ones that we use now they have a brass jumper that you actually have to to kind of toggle you'll see that the this person here is using a needle nose pliers and what they're doing is they're going to break that little jumper out now what that um, what you that is for a dual voltage system so for when they use a single voltage I'm going to put on their um, removable brass jumper and I'll just say on here leave in for um, high voltage only now so what you're going to recognize is when you go to, to a low voltage system then of course the low voltage one will you'll have to pull that jumper out so on some of them you broke them off some of them it's an actual wire jumper um, if it's a white rogers they actually have screw terminal designations so there's a couple of them that we deal with and i'm going to show you uh, one of the um, images that we dealt with um, um, and specifically in class the other day this is one of them and here's this is it so this particular combination fan and limit control is um, the one that we were dealing with and what typically will happen is between the fan you'll notice in the upper right they it identifies fan between the fan and the limit side there's um, those screw terminals that are going to be where the wiring would go to. So on the original um, factory sent unit, they would have had a jumper that jumpered between, um, it would have been, it would have jumpered between the bottom two screws. And that would have been basically the dual voltage jumper. On the Honeywell one, this particular one, it's a little harder to see it there. There we go, maybe that one's better. On this one, um, there would have been a jumper that went in between those right in the middle of this control and that's already been pulled out or broken out of that and uh, to allow us to do that um, so that's and you'll even see that it says break off jumper for low voltage is what it that's what it is so break off the jumper for the low voltage and that's um, and it's again it's a note on there now it's not super you know easy to see but you have to be aware of that uh, primarily you have to be aware of it otherwise you'll blow up everything on there so so and again removable brass jumper and I'll just put on there um, remove for uh, low voltage okay all right so you got to make sure that you do that so now I'll explain a little bit on this so all right so as we go back to the, as we go back to this diagram, as, as you'll recognize, is that um, the 115 circuit that would be feeding through your system, it's going to go to the fan control. So on a typical heat call, you're expecting the thermostat to energize the gas valve, to warm up the heat exchanger. As the heat exchanger gets warm, this control has to be getting warmer. And as it gets warmer, this thing will start to rise up and eventually will close that contact and allow the fan motor to be, uh, to be operating. You know, it's going to be all excited and it's going to be running. Now, on this particular uh, limit control that's on the bottom here, as you know, it's, I, it's the easiest way to identify that it's a limit is the fact that it, the way it's drawn. So it's drawn with the symbol where it's triggering or toggling it up. Um, above it's opening on a rise and that's the key thing to recognize and you'll notice there with this system is that being the, that this limit is on the 24 volt or on the high voltage side that means that any time that we that have a high limit that will, that would open up the fan control would still keep running but the transformer would lose all of its power and if that's the case then obviously that's the that would be the deal now what I want to show or just take a look at is this. So let's let's draw what it would look like from a from a in the low voltage side. So on the low voltage side, what we'll take a look at in the low voltage side is number one, we're gonna still have we'll still have 
the 115 will go through the fan control. It'll warm up. That will uh, allow the fan motor to run as needed. This will be my fan control. That'll go to my neutral. That's 115. I'll just draw it that way. All right, now we still are going to now feed the transformer. And now this will be your R circuit that'll come out of here. And what they will do is either A, they will put that limit in this position. I'll draw it this way. They will draw it that way. And then that will, that will continue on to, let's say, to R, and then go through the thermostat. And let's say on a fall in temp, we'll just say R to W, I'll just draw it simple. And that would be one way that it would be done. So this is one possibility. So option, I'll just put in there option one. If it is, if it is done this way, then that jumper that is internal, and this is the mistake that some of the techs have made in the field, is that if you forget to take that jumper out, what you are doing is you are, you're literally going to burn up that circuit. You're going to essentially be taking the 115 that you've got here, and you're going to be just simply just shooting it right over to this side. So you're basically going to be tying the primary and the secondary side of the transformer together. That means everything beyond here, the thermostat most likely, I'll just put on here, um, ignition module could be one of them, the gas valve might be another one. All of those are going to be toast. They're going to be, every one of those things is going to be smoked. So that's one of those where you, you really have to, if you get into one of these jobs that have one of these controls on it, and for that customer that isn't ready to change that furnace and they don't want to do that, um, and it's a simple limit control, it's not super expensive, that's what's going to happen. They're going to say, no, let's just go ahead and fix it. But if you go in there and you you don't know about those controls or those limits and you don't separate them out, if, they're, if one of them is operating at 24 and the other one's at, at 115, you are going to smoke everything and you'll have to, you'll be A, replacing the whole furnace or you'll be putting in uh, all new controls, which is going to be really expensive and really costly. Um, I have seen jobs that have had this done already and uh, where the tech came in, he forgot to change out and it smoked everything on the secondary side. So that meant every single ignition, all the ignition modules, um, any control they had on that side was all toast. So that's the one thing that you have to really be careful with. All right. So last, um, the as far as the adjustment settings in that, so there is some adjustability. What, I, what I'm going to do is I'd like to um, take a look at the adjustments. How do I make adjustments? So, you know, I'm just going to put a note on here. Whoops. All right, so we'll see, if, there it goes. Okay, so basically how do I adjust these? All right, some of the controls are adjustable, some are not, so let's take a look at it. All right, so the way that I'm gonna adjust these, so when I wanna look at, at these controls now, I want you to understand what we're specifically doing is we are, as we're looking at the face of this control, and so there will be a dial that's shown right there. As we look at that particular face on that control, what you're gonna simply want to do is you're gonna want to um, hold that dial down and you're gonna prevent that from turning by itself. So you're gonna usually, what I usually do is I put my thumb over the face of the dial 
And then what I do is I actually will slide with my other hand, I will slide the adjustable limit stop that's shown here. So in the adjustable limit stop that we're identifying is this adjustable limit stop right there. And you're gonna want to make sure that you either, you're gonna move moving this up or you're gonna move moving it down. One way or the other, you're trying to position that control to be to the proper limit of what the original manufacturer had done. And that's the one thing that you wanna do. Um, I, the, you know, they always put a note on there, do not rotate, hold when you're setting these pointers or when you're setting the positions. Now, the reason why that is, is the second you start rotating those by hand, they, they get out of, uh, out of calibration to some extent. You, you potentially risk changing the, the settings or changing the way, that, uh, the way, way it's gonna function. So it's, it's pretty major on there. Now, there is a couple of, um, um, there's going to be three settings that you're going to be dealing with on here. So the first one that I'm going to just circle is you're going to be dealing with the adjustable limit stop, and that's this one. You're going to also be dealing with the fan off setting and the fan on setting. And the lowest is going to be this one. And the fan on setting will be just slightly, um, that's going to be just slightly more. So it's, there's, three, there's three adjustments that you're making. So those are the three that you're doing. So that's kind of the, the one way to deal with it. Um, for the guys that were doing this in class, um, they had already experienced this. But on the, to add these wires, to add wires into these, it's hard to deal with stranded wire with these controls. And to, how do you get the wires in or out? And typically what they have is there's a, they're showing a standard screwdriver, a flat blade screwdriver that you're pushing in. And as you're pushing in that standard blade screwdriver, you're going to, you're going to open up this little hole. What I'm going to just show right there, um, you're going to be opening that up. So you'll see where this wire is going in here. Now that wire is going to be pushed into that little hole and then the way that you do this in the field is when you push them in, you're going to release that screwdriver from that from pushing that in, and then you're going to let it try to, it's a resistance push uh, connection. So you're going to try to give the wire just a little bit of a snug to see that it made a good connection. Now, some of the controls that are in the field, some of those wires oftentimes are what they call tinned, and those are wires that have the stranded um, conductors that would be, that are uh, soldered to uh, just provide, uh, uh, it's easier to push them in on a lot of those types of controls. So it's one of those where it's a little bit tricky. I've dealt with plenty of these in the field uh, that uh, it's challenging sometimes to get the wires to go in if you have to run new wire uh, sometimes on those. Or if you break a wire or do something, um, you're gonna have to deal with what you're gonna have to deal with. So, but there, that's where it is. So there's actually four places to run wires. So the, the four places are essentially gonna be um, this will be obviously you could just say and start if I start left to right on the fan side We'll say this is number one. This is number two It's so for so on the limit side. This will be number th We'll say that's three and this will be four and that's all of these little holes that are right there So if I were to draw what's going on internally in here this fan side is essentially going to be And the limit side will be very similar, except we're going to draw that limit in the, in the position where it would open on a rise. And that's essentially, they're just connecting those up. So again, very straightforward. It's a good little setup. Um, it served its purpose. So if, again, I, I don't anticipate too many brand new units, or, but uh, there, are there are units out there that are in that... Um, 10, 15 year old range um, that uh, the customer is not ready to, to see it changed. And if you have one of those that goes bad, you, you may find that um, you could just replace it with a, the like, a like model and just make sure that you adhere to their policies and rules and then you set them up the same way so you don't take on that liability. You know, that's the best way to handle that. So next thing. Um, Next thing that we'll take a look at. Now the adjustments on there, as far as what to adjust them, 
Uh, I am going to, I'm just going to put a note on there in the adjustments and let me get one more note on there. I'm going to put C, um, last page on this dock. All right, so, so I'm going to just advance ahead a little bit on that adjustment here. So, um, the last page on this document, we've got several um, settings that are identified in here. Let me go right to it. So, there we go. All right, so on this particular one, this is on page 12 on my particular module, and, um, uh, and I think primarily because I added an extra page on here, but the fan and limit settings on here. So, for example, where should I be setting them? And again, uh, the, I think the, the point that I would make on here is, you know, these settings are approximate. They're approximate only. They're not to be used. If you've got manufacturer settings, you use those. It's just simply a guideline, but it is something that I do want you to be aware of. They, they shouldn't be. You got to be a little bit careful when you start um, manipulating limit controls and things like that. So the limit settings. First thing I would hit up on is on a gas gravity furnace. Gas gravity furnace, first of all, the first thing that I would point out to you on, on a gravity furnace is the fact that there is no fan. So um, I'm just going to make a little note on there, and I want you to recognize this is, just put there is no fan. So if there's no fan, um, then there's no there's nothing in there. So the gravity settings on these things not to put in there not to exceed 250. So what type of furnace would be like that? And obviously you might say, well, why does that fan, why does the fan have any impact on the limit? So a gravity furnace essential is a furnace that relies on normal convection flow currents is what it does. Um, so that's kind of one of those that you have to deal with. So a gas forced air furnace, a low efficiency one, so this would be your, you know, a, a standard uh, efficiency, you know, low efficiency furnace, an older unit, most likely. That furnace, you know, you're talking about 78% and lower, put on there not to exceed about 200 degrees. And then um, uh, as a setting. And then the forced air mid-efficiency, again, we're getting a little bit more efficiency. The one thing I want you to recognize is that as we get more efficiency in that 78 to 84%, now we're looking at, you know, 180 degrees is kind of that typical max. And then when you get into the forest air high efficiency furnaces, the, you know, the 90% on up, now we're looking at about not to exceed about 170. Now the purpose of those settings is more or less to give you a safe guide to at least a starting point. And uh, of course, any manufacturer that would have a lower setting, you're not gonna go beyond that. You're not gonna do that. They may be doing something where they're measuring it or they might be having things go on where the air blows over that control, that cools it down, that doesn't give an accurate setting. They, they would have to know that. So those are things that I put these down as a guide. It's a starting point. Um, but in, in these cases, just um, take them for what they're worth. Um, it is something that I do um, I do want you to have um, some knowledge of or you know have some uh, uh, of this. So put an asterisk next to those things to make sure you guys are aware of what those are. The last one that I have on here is an oil furnace, and that's typically your 80 percenters, even like an 80 to 83 percent efficient oil furnace. Um, you're talking about your typical lower efficiency appliance that's you know in that 200 degree range is a limit setting on there. Um, when it comes to the uh, settings for um, the fan and those types of things will will be um, getting into that um, a little bit as well um, on there. So I guess I'll, I'll, I'll hold off on going through any more of those. All right, so there was one additional um, feature I wanted to hit up on. And uh, there was, uh, for example, Lennox, they had, there's some special applications out there where on... Uh, on some of the, the older Lennox furnaces that, um, for example, some of the guys uh, that still deal with uh, a pulse furnace, as an example. Lennox had a, a fan and limit control that they had used where they would uh, essentially allow the unit to, to 
to limit or cycle the, the heat exchanger as the heat exchanger built up all this heat, it would actually open up, you know, essentially open up that gas, the, let's say, or, or uh, open up the gas valve circuit, allow the fan to kick on, it would allow that to cool on, and you sat there and you heated it and cooled it and cooled it and heated it, and you just constantly went back and forth on there. And those were the, that was kind of the, an oddball setting on there. It's very unusual. Um, and again, a lot of those units you would uh, most likely, hopefully most of the customers are pulling those out. But uh, I do know of a few people that still have them and they love them. They, it's, that's their, their go-to unit. So, but uh, be that as it may. Um, let's talk about troubleshooting, checkout. All right. So if I were to um, want to verify that there's power into this unit so I'm gonna go I'm gonna go to the second page in here just for checking out and troubleshooting it so the one thing that that I typically would do when I want to when I want to troubleshoot a unit like this in the field what I'm what I'm typically trying to do is this um, in a limit like these first thing I have to recognize is if it is a if it's the limit control then I'm I have to identify, is it 115 volts or is it 24? Now, most likely I'm gonna look at the diagram. So, and I'll just say on there, look at the diagram. Now, there's a bunch of these things that are out there that are like that, that would be, you could see them on the 24 side, you could see them on the 115 side. There's really no telling what it's gonna be used. Not to mention, these are not only used in gas furnaces, but these are used also in oil furnaces. So you have to be aware of that. So if it's specifically looking at the limit side, you have, if it is 115, then you're simply saying, okay, do I have voltage here? So, you know, I'll just say, all right, I have 115 volts there. Is that there? I don't know. You have to measure that, and you're going to measure that to ground, um, to the neutral. And then I would see, all right, do I have 115 here? And again, you're gonna check that. So you're looking for those. Now, a person could go across the limit. So you could say, okay, I'm gonna take my meter and I'll measure the, I'll measure the differential across that limit, which of course will work provided that you have a complete path. So, and typically a limit that's closed um, would typically yield you zero volts. A limit that's open should yield you whatever the potential voltage is. However, that's assuming that the entire circuit is, is indeed uh, closed. If you have a break in that circuit, it'll show you zero no matter what. Uh, so a, a person has to be a little bit careful on that. Now, if it's 24 volts, the, the, the only thing that changes is instead of the 115, it'll be 24 volts. And same thing goes here, 24 volts would be there and the same thing here, 24 volts if it's open and zero if it's closed. Um, I typically tend to try to use the, I try to figure out what am I dealing with is the circuit um, to identify is the voltage here or is it not? I, I find that way more valuable than trying to say, okay, do I have zero volts here? Because zero volts could mean there's no power to this. So that's the, that's the big reason why you have to do that. On the fan side, it's exactly, you're gonna troubleshoot it the same as you do on the limit side. The only difference is on the fan side. You're now not gonna use that side, but you're going to use this side. So now you're focusing your efforts over on this side. And you can say, okay, do I have voltage at this point? Yes, I do. If I, then, you, then of course you're saying, all right, do I have voltage here? And, um, and that's one of those things. The other thing that I typically found helpful to some extent is I usually looked at the face of the dial and I was trying to identify. So in other words, a lot of these units right in the smack dab in the middle, there will be like a little notch. And that notch is essentially kind of like your, your it's basically your way to identify what it thinks is the temp. So right now in this drawing, it thinks that it's approximately, I would say in that, let's say 75 degree range as a, as a rough idea. So if it's in that 75, 80 degree range, that's what it thinks its sense temp is. Now it may not be accurate, but at least you have a starting point. And then of course you can you know, proceed. So in other words, if you see that the fan is not running, 
and you're well beyond. So let's say that this dial has rotated over this way. And you notice that this little mark here is right where that is at. And if you notice that and the fan's not running, now you gotta be looking, okay, do I have voltage there? Do I have uh, a motor that's burned out? What's going on with it? So it's still fairly typical basic troubleshooting as far as the, the um, checking out. But again, a voltmeter, clamp anemeter, those types of things will actually be functional and help you out on there. So that's typically what, what usually will end up um, being involved with this. All right, so um, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to stop this particular one before I get into the uh,